Spackman. Um, this program and the corresponding exhibition, Doreen Spackman Remembered, is co-sponsored by the Iowa Quilt Museum and the Wisconsin Museum of Quilts and Fiber Arts. Um, my name is Emily Schlemwitz. I'm the curator at the WMQFA, and I'm so happy to be joined by the I Iowa's board president, Marianne Pons, and director, Megan Barrett. Um, we are here to talk about the incredible Doreen Speckman, whose work and life had a significant impact on the quilting world in the 1980s and 90s, um, before her untimely passing in 1999. Um, so before all of this craziness happened, uh, myself and Melissa Rahlstad, our director, had the great honor of going to see the exhibition in Iowa and attend a day-long event about Doreen with Marianne and Megan, and we just thought, wouldn't it be amazing if we brought some of that programming to our audiences virtually? Um, so without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Megan and Marianne, who are sitting amidst the exhibition, um, six feet away. Uh, and they perhaps can start with how the exhibition came about, because Marianne, I know you knew Doreen and taught alongside her and was very influential in bringing this all together. So, so thank you, Emily. And it's great to be with you. And despite all the, um, just the, the, the incredible world we're living in right now, it has given us new ways to connect with people that I think are really valuable. And uh, it was great to have you guys here in Winterset. And uh, thank you so much for two weeks ago generating the first event like this and uh, mentioning donations right off the top. I mean, this is a free event. You don't have to donate anything, but you know, like, every museum in the country now, no one's coming through our doors. So we're, we have no admissions, we have very little revenue. So um, all that aside, just being together is wonderful. Um, Doreen Speckman uh, of Madison, Wisconsin was a colleague of mine back in the uh, day. Uh, I think Liz Porter and I met her. Well, I know we met her in uh, Houston. I can't remember just what year, would it would have been in the 1980s. But all three of us uh, were in, invited to be teachers. Houston International School which is, was a huge feather in our cap because we were up and coming writers and quilters and it's really it was so exciting to go down there and we we met we'd never met Doreen before um, but somehow recognized her she was wearing a quilted vest or something like that. but we wound up sharing a taxi cab to the uh, hotel because none of us had very much money and it was a way to uh, cut our costs and, and we got acquainted and, and Doreen was expressing um, nervousness, anxiety in that cab ride because she was one of the two lecturers that was going to be speaking to the entire audience that, that night. And in those days at Houston Folk Festival, it was much smaller and every single person went to every event. So she knew that she would probably have a thousand people in her audience. And her lecture was uh, called The Birth and Development of a Reluctant Quilter, where she talked about how she tried not to be a quilter and she made all these pillow tops and if she just put all pillow tops together they would have been a quilt and she was such a, a humorist she was so entertaining that she need not have worried because people were absolutely rolling in the aisles and she was followed by Yvonne Porcella who became instrumental in the formation of the uh, the studio art quilt association and uh, her topic was something like fashion as compared to quilts. And it was a good lecture, but I mean, following, you never wanted to follow Doreen Speckman because she was just so entertaining and so warm that people just had this great feeling and just didn't want it to stop. So um, uh, Doreen and Liz and I bumped into each other for years uh, and, and you know, fellow Midwesterners, we um, were colleagues, we worked for many of the same quilt guilds and conferences and so forth. And um, Doreen was not the first, but she was one of the early people that started leading tour groups of quilters around the country. Well, not around the country, but uh, to Alaska, Hawaii, to France. Uh, people loved her so much, they wanted to be with her. And going on a cruise or going on a trip with Doreen was just like the best thing possible. And so when she died in Ireland at age 48, um, 20 years ago, I mean, it was just an incredible shock. Just, just imagine whoever you think of as the top quilter in the nation right now, and you learn that she had died at age 48. Uh, I mean, every, we just reeled, the whole quilt world just reeled about it. And um, her daughter, Megan Speckman, who visited us when uh, we had events before the world changed in early March, 
uh, was just in her 20s when her mom passed, and she was the only child, and she just wasn't in a position to um, to handle the quilt collection, her mom's quilts. And so Gerald Roy of the Pilgrim Roy collection, a very good friend of Doreen's, uh, uh, brought Doreen's quilts, went to uh, New Hampshire where they have been in storage for 20 years. And I went to Jerry at a quilting event, an American Quilt Study Group event, and um, was talking to him about exhibitions that, of his collection that might come to the Iowa Quilt Museum. And he said, you know what you really ought to do is you ought to display Doreen Speckman's quilts. And so it's just a perfect example of, of how a conversation between two colleagues leads to something like this. The wonderful thing about coordinating with the Wisconsin Quilt Museum is that the Wisconsin Quilt Museum is a museum. The Iowa Quilt Museum is a display only museum. So we have about four exhibits a year. We borrow quilts on a theme. We either curate our exhibit ourselves, or we have a guest curator. And then when that exhibit is over, those quilts all go home. Well, with this exhibit, when these quilts go home, they are going home to Wisconsin, where they, most of them will reside at, in Cedarburg, which is, it just, I mean, I feel emotional about it because I'm so happy that these quilts have come out where everyone can see them. They will be able to see them in Wisconsin later this year and that they will go into the collection of the Wisconsin Museum of Quilts and Fiber Arts. Yeah, we also just feel um, incredibly grateful to you for bringing this collection to our attention. And, um, and we're really excited to welcome it into our collection. Um, and we really feel like it, you know, the quilts are coming home. And I know that that's true for Megan Speckman as well. Um, mm -hmm. And we're going to be helping her place some of the quilts at other institutions, but the bulk of them will come to us. Um, and that's just incredibly exciting. Um, they are really beautiful quilts. Um, and I think we can talk more about um, what makes her practice so innovative. Um, I think, you know, as you said last time, which I thought was really interesting, was that, you know, when you were a quilt, if you were a well-known quilter back in the 90s, you had to have your own fabric line, you had to have your books, um, which I have here, um, and which I believe you can order from the Iowa Quilt Museum. Um, and, you know, you had to be teaching internationally, nationally. Um, so yeah, if you could talk a little bit about what quilt, the quilting world was like back then, I think that would be really interesting. Oh, sure. Um, yes, uh, yeah, it was a, uh, the term uh, on the circuit, if you were on the circuit, it meant you were getting invited to go around the country and teach quilting. And, um, Sometimes people say, what's the circuit? You know, and it's like, nobody really advertised. There wasn't an actual official circuit, but it was just the term that we used. And um, so Doreen was definitely on the circuit. And, um, uh, and another comment for, I mean, I'm sure many that are online now or some are in my generation, some are younger, some are older, but um, you know, there was no internet in those days. And so, Children's Newsletter Magazine was sort of our internet. That's how you knew what was going on. That's what you knew what products and techniques were out there. And it was a different world. And, and I think it's a great world now that we can be so connected uh, through cyberspace. But it was, a, I guess, maybe a little closer knit. And, um, you know, in fact, I'm not sure I shared this last time, but it, it, when I was going to um, uh, be on a faculty of a conference and I looked, uh, you know, I'd be on the airplane and I'd look at see who else was going to be there. And I saw Doreen Speckman's name. I was both happy and sad because I was so happy I get to see her, but I knew that she'd be the person everybody would want to gather around <laughs> because she was so popular and so beloved and so much fun. And uh, I mean, just to be around her and hear her talk and she had this dry Midwestern humor, stiff humor that she just, she poked fun at herself and her foibles and it just leveled the field that we all had the same, you know, relationship with our scene ripper that she did. And um, so uh, she was sort of like um, every quilter, you know. Yeah, and she was she was pretty ahead of her time reading through her books. Like she advert she advocates for using computer programs as like a graphing mechanism for understanding your quilts. And like she was very much into the design wall. Um, so and talking about that. So I just. And then she also, you know, we can talk, she also developed these 27 units. I mean, some of those were already 
she named the, the units. Um, she gave names to historic units or she came up with her own. Um, so she definitely was sort of pushing what quilting can be. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, um, maybe to, if you don't mind my bringing uh, our Megan, Megan Barrett into the conversation because uh, Megan was not a quilter when she uh, became the first and continue and still director of the Iowa Quilt Museum. She is, she is a quilter now. And so she's learned so much through our 14 or 15 exhibits we've had here uh, since our existence. But I think it would be interesting, and we didn't do this last time, for Megan to talk about her own thoughts when she was anticipating the arrival of these boxes of quilts that had not been in the world, been seen for 20 years. And then we opened them and... So I think there's this really interesting phenomenon that happens with things that are around the turn of the 21st century. And that I was in high school, I graduated in 2002, and I like to think that that was just a few years ago, because the 1980s was only like 20 years ago, right? Um, so the fact that 1999 was actually 21, 22 years ago now, doesn't feel right, first of all. But when I look back at my high school pictures, things, it's very dated compared to what we think of now. I would never want to show you my ninth grade haircut. Um, so when we unpacked these quilts, I marveled at the fact that they were so kind of hip and chic by today's standards even. They're fantastic. Um, the one I'm sitting in front of is called Cross Street Pasture. And the colors, it's, it's geometric, it's got bold designs. You can very much see if quilts are making it right now. And so it just really um, is a great testament to Doreen's sense of color and style and design that her quilts withstood this sense of time really well. And there is much, we're as able to appreciate them with a 2021 lens as much as they were through a 1990s lens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of my favorite quotes by her is, um, about turquoise and how much she loved turquoise and how she was always incorporating lots of different colors. So she said, one turquoise is good, three is better, and eight is better yet. Um, and you, you can tell that she really loved color um, and loved design. Um, and I noticed in your exhibition, you've now, you've pinned back a lot of the, the quilts so you can see the backing. Um, and they're just, they're just really vibrant. So Doreen is a self-avowed fabricaholic, um, and sh so she picked up tons of fabrics, and um, Marianne shares a neat anecdote about Doreen referring to weeding through her fabric stash and trying to get rid of some things, and she akins it to trying to take, tea, uh, take sand from the beach with a teaspoon. Um, so over the course of her career, Doreen collected thousands upon thousands of these fabrics, fabulous fabrics, but we all know that they don't all work well for patchwork, so she put the, lots of really fun fabrics on the backs of quilts. Here's a fantastic polka dot on the back of this. And polka dots, um, you know, it just works. Um, she used lots of color, but she didn't just use, quote, in vogue colors of the time. There are a few quilts in the collection that are kind of those 19, late 80s, early 90s, muted mauves and forest greens. Um, but she just used all of the colors um, and the color wheel, it doesn't go out of style. <laughs> yeah, and you're- you know, something I, I was just thinking about something I didn't mention last time, I don't think. A couple of things about Doreen as we talk about and remember her is, you know, I think, I think most all filters have the term audition in their vocabulary. I'm gonna audition a fabric. Doreen is the first person that I ever heard use that term. I, I don't know if she is the one who coined it, but she would talk about auditioning fabrics. Uh, and she also um, did something so cute, and I think it's in her book too. She would, she would have the fabrics laid out, you know, all your fabrics laid out for a quilt, and she'd pick one up and she'd put it behind her back, and she says, do we miss it? Are we sorry it's gone? And then she would put it back on, she said, are we glad it's back? And um, so, you know, I'm thinking about Doreen passing away so young, you know, like we, we miss her, you know, uh, and all her, her humor and her innovation. But um, yes, yeah, she, she uh, 
She loved life, she loved fabric, she loved quilting, she loved quilters. So someone just commented, my favorite lecture was, sometimes it's enough to just own it. And I think that's a lot of her spirit. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> Um, yeah, and you're, you know, one of the things that I thought was really amazing about the weekend was getting to meet Megan Speckman, as you mentioned, um, she came to Iowa, um, and also like her life was just so, she was, she was able to go on all these international quilt cruises and um, really um, was kind of immersed as well in the quilting world in her own way. Um, so mm -hmm. it just, it seems like it was a real close-knit family in some ways in, within the clothing world. Well, yeah, Dor Doreen had only one child, Megan, and you know, I had, I have, I had three kid, young kids at the time. It's like, how do you pick which one's going to go on a trip with you? But when you have just one, you know, um, I mean, I just remember Megan uh, being, joining her mom so many times. And uh, I think Megan, when she was here, said she, that she was 10 the first time she got on a plane by herself as an unaccompanied minor with all the paperwork and flew to Houston or somewhere to be with her mom. And you know, um, Megan lives in San Francisco. And I and I asked her when she was here, well, why California? Well, Doreen taught in California over and over again and had so many friends in California. And Megan joined her so many times. That's where Megan's love of California came from. And um, but but uh, yeah, she was she was she had a million mothers, you know, because all of the cool, you know, just they, they, they just took Megan treated her like one of their kids and so uh so she she grew up with that the quilters love around her she's not a quilter, but that's okay um she's actually she's here today as well yeah. um, so maybe we could invite her to come on if she wants again oh my <laughs> Turn that off. Ah, what? Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh no. Am I on the video part? Shoot. <laughs> yes, your hair is getting longer too. <laughs> Wait, I can't find myself. Oh, here we go. It's not greasy. It's just still wet. <laughs> oh, I have my bad glasses on too. Super old lady with the glitter on the top. <laughs> they're cute. they're good. Oh, oh. Zoe. and this is Zoe so but no thank you guys I'm just so happy that you guys have the quilts out and about and that they're getting getting looked at and talked about so thank you guys so much of course so and I still have fabric I'll put po I'll post a link so if you guys want um from my mom's Provence most of it I think is Provence too but there might be a little bit of the earlier ones and so I'll add a link to that in just a little bit. Um, someone, I think that fabric line was in the works at the time your mom passed away. Um, the second one, and, yeah. Yeah, I don't think she got it was, I think she maybe got to see a little bit of it finished before, but I don't, I don't remember exactly. Um, someone is saying, Katie, Katie is saying, Megan, you look like your mother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kind of I sound like her I think <laughs> except for the bad words that I use more than she probably did but um yeah thanks I'm gonna do a screen share real quick and I've got Megan's website pulled up that shows Doreen's fabrics um oh, so cool. it's gonna kill everybody else's videos for Can you all see that? Uh, uh, not quite yet. No. Okay. Oh, here we go. There it is. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. So you can click around, and it's like there's twelve bucks in a yard, and I'm just doing a blanket seven dollars shipping for as much as it's, you get a better value for shipping if you just mm -hmm. buy, buy more. <laughs> so uh, just through the U.S. Uh, that was another. Service. I don't have to touch anything. The door is open. I print it all out and drop it at the post office. So it's pretty cool. And yeah. I think that's the one of the ways that resulted from this um, this whole thing is Megan had been fabrics for 20 years. They still look classic, they're beautiful. And so this um, 
event and Megan Cumming, you know, has made these beautiful fabrics available to quilters again. So they're vintage, I suppose. Yeah, they are. They're all like over 20 years old. It's crazy to think <laughs> that. Vintage. Uh, Megan, do you have a favorite quilt? Of your mom? Well, the one that you're standing behind. And then, of course, the Peaky and Spike go to Hate Ashbury. So those are my my two favorites. But I love I do love Magpie Roadkill a lot too. So but and I think all three of those quilts have a heavy Australian fabric when she I think maybe like after the first or second time she went to Australia, like a, a lot of the fabric I think from that are in those quilts are, are from Australia. So we'll point those out when we do our gallery walk yeah. here in a little bit. Yeah. So one of the things that happened when Megan was here and we let her have some time alone with these quilts was for her to choose the ones that, because they all belong to her actually. Mm -hmm. And um, Jerry Roy was just, you know, storing them. And so Megan had the opportunity to see them again and choose which ones will be her forever quilts that will eventually go to her. And, um, one of uh, Doreen's good friends was here and, uh, and Megan presented this friend with uh, a, yeah. a top, which was really <laughs> fun. She took it home with her, it was great. Jeannie Creighton got a cow top, yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. It, was, and so, it was really fun. Uh, yeah, so and Emily can maybe talk about at some point that, the, that when the quilts come down, Megan Barrett and I are taking them down later today uh, we, we extended the show two weeks, even though nobody's here, just so we could do this event. And then eventually they will travel by ground. When we can travel again, we'll drive them over or Emily will come and get them. And they'll go to uh, Cedarburg. And then later in the summer, uh, Megan Speckman and Zoe too, I believe, will be in Wisconsin oh. for a period of time. And they'll really catalog things and, you know, get everything together and, you know, form the plan for curating the quilts into the collection and which ones. Uh, and, and it may be, uh, so stay tuned everybody, is that once um, the collection has been assessed and some quilts may go to some other museums, there may be a few that will be of, offered for sale. So if you've always wanted to own a Doreen Speckman quilt, it, it may be possible that there will be some available and their sales will, will benefit, we don't know yet, but you know, this, it just depends on, well, maybe that's the question for you, Emily, you know, what's your capacity there and so forth. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we, we definitely have the capacity to, to take all the quilts or take a selection. Um, and it'll really depend on, you know, our conversation with Megan and, and also reaching out to the other in, quilt museums and seeing if they are interested in taking some works and, and seeing where we can place them because I do think, you know, it, it would be great to have them elsewhere in the world too. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so I think, I think it'll just be a collaboration between me and Megan and, and see what happens. Um, yeah. So, yeah, um, but we're really excited. We're just really, I, I think you guys are showing about, how many, about 40 quilts right now? Um, how many do you have up? We have about 30 right now. 30? Mm -hmm. And then there's more. Gerald Roy has more, right? So there's, there's quite a few quilts. Yeah. I there. might be able to snag a couple from people in Wisconsin for the show, too. Like, oh, there's some good ones on people's walls, and I, I know where they are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they would lend them for, for a little bit. So. And one of Doreen's quilts, um, it's called The Blade. She actually won uh, first place at one of the AQS shows for professional quilting category, I think. So The Blade is already actually on exhibit in Paducah at the National Quilt Museum. Yeah, she won the, she won the award in 1985 for the professional patchwork category, um, which really speaks to her patchwork skills. Um, mm -hmm. She was an incredible patchworker. Um, Here's a picture of the blade. It's not, I'm just holding up a, a, a handout that we have here. But it, it makes a transition to tell everybody um, that what Doreen did, you know, 20 years ago, uh, she's not the only person to do this, but she is one of the first I remember, is she looked at the quilt as a whole canvas. And so while the, the blocks in the blade are very much traditional blocks, I don't know what block it is, but it's, it's certainly a traditional uh, aesthetic, but she placed her colors and 
the background so that you view the quilt as a whole um, entity. Um, and uh, it's, it's a perfect example of the combination of the art quilt aesthetic and the traditional aesthetic coming together in one work. Yeah, you can also see a lot in her quilts how she achieves the sense of curves. Um, you can see that, you'll see that in the exhibition, but just by using these, you know, triangles and squares essentially to get this sense of curves, which is really incredible. Um, yeah. So I feel like we've segued a little bit. Are we ready to start seeing some quilts? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Yeah. So guys, before, so for our listeners, if you, um, Marianne is going to talk uh, and Megan is going to pan around the exhibition. Um, so if you go, if you hover in the upper right corner of um, Megan Barrett's phone uh, image, you'll see, you can pin the, you can pin the image and that'll help you um, pin video. Um, so that'll that'll keep the that'll keep the tour going while Marianne's talking. Okay. So we're looking at running hot and cold. So should I talk now, Emily? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So running hot and cold. I'm so glad that Megan Barrett mentioned the name of it, the title because I can't see that from where I am. But this is another great example of the quilt, of the treatment, this thing that uh, Doreen did with the blade where you've got traditional patchwork units, but the color and the placement is looking at the quilt as a whole. So it's ignoring the usual construction of um, sashing and strips. I mean, it's block to block, but this kind of quilt can really only be done, I would say two ways. One with the design wall, which I'm sure is how it was done, or with a very, very good sketch of the fabric goes because you would lay the whole thing out uh, and then sew it together in some type of That's a beautiful quote. This is the flashback. Um, Peaky and Spike go to hate Ashbury. Megan Speckman noted this one as one of her favorites. Yes, this is one that will live with, uh, will eventually go to Megan. Um, but, you know, she lives in San Francisco where the Haight-Ashbury district was so famous and infamous during the 60s and early 70s. And it has that psychedelic vibe. So you can understand why Megan would want this one on her own wall. Um, you can, it's just a fantastic use of fabrics and color. Um, and yet with traditional piecing, and I, uh, there's her backing fabric, which is a novelty print. Um, and uh, you can see um, just this burst of color and the, the wonderful collection of fabrics that uh, Doreen had at her disposal. This one is Ambrosia. And so we're back to a much more traditional layout, skinny um, sashing strips, uh, traditional uh, patchwork, a more traditional layout, but you know, the, the way her use of fabrics is, uh, they just, the centers of the blocks just sort of glow. Okay. I know Megan is trying to walk as gently as possible, not <laughs> take the camera, but it's possible. <laughs> this one's called Big Stars, Little Stars. And the coolest thing about this one, I'm gonna to have to get up close. There's rooster fabric on the front and hen fabric on the back. <laughs> There's that Doreen Speckman humor long after she's gone. Oh, and a, this might be a good point to point out, and I know, you know, you can't, everyone watching can't see the way you could with your own eyes, but Doreen Speckman's um, workmanship was impeccable. She had sewn her whole life, garment sewing, sewing everything, and so when she came to patchwork, she was meticulous, and uh, many of the quilts on display 
and you all will get to see them when you go to Wisconsin to see them in person. She hand quilted. I mean, Doreen was also a knitter, so she, her hands were always busy. If she was finding something, knitting something, quilt something. And this was before we had the, the, the big boom of, um, of machine quilting. I mean, machine quilting was in its more early days. And some of her quilts were machine quilted, and some were quilted by others, but she was an excellent hand quilter herself. This is Peaky and Spike with the Night and Moon. So it features two of her bl blocks um, from her collection or her curation, I suppose. So Peaky and Spike is this block here with the big triangle surrounded by two skinny 90 degree triangles. And then the Night and Moon, um, half square triangles, each with a strip through them. So Doreen used these um, various units, and I guess I guess you aren't you won't see me, but we can show them again later. But but she used these basic patchwork units, and um, and some of them, you know, like a pinwheel. We all know what a pinwheel is, and we um, a center diamond. But if, if there was not a name already of a unit, she gave it a name, and Peaky and Spike became her most famous. And it was a unit that had been around, but it didn't have a it didn't have a name that was easy to remember. It was just three triangles. So um, night and noon is one that was already a block called night and noon that had these three splits. Okay, I'm going to the stars or the hearts. This one is my heart belongs to quilting. And this is, Emily alluded to this, how the, she achieved the curve without actually any curved piecing. So I'm gonna get a little bit closer. And this one, Megan, this is a quilt top, right? So she would, she often had tops. Um, because it was easier to fold up and put in her suitcase and travel with them. Right, and this one uh, is a top, but it is bound. So, you know, she would have done that to carry it around with her without, you know, getting it zipped into the suitcase. Um, we didn't have wheels on our suitcases back in those days. So she would pile everything she could into a Land's End soft-sided uh, suitcase. And uh, this one she put out as a pattern. And we have it on our curtain wall, which is kind of the, place of greatest honor at the Iowa Quilt Museum. And uh, the pattern instructions, I've forgotten now, it's like 21 pages long or 18, Megan remembers, 18 pages long. And it said it's something like it's not for the beginner. This one we kind of refer to as her ode to Wisconsin. It's called Elsie's Heart features this buttery yellow and Elsie the cow right in the center. I'm really looking forward, Emily, to when this exhibit hangs in uh, Cedarburg and of course being able to travel again because it's your museum is as unique as our, your gallery is as unique as ours is in its own way. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how you guys hang this exhibit because I know it'll look fantastic. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so um, you guys are in the old J.C. Penney and we're in a 1850s barn for those who haven't been. And our, our exhibition, um, I should just say the dates, November 19th through January 31st. Um, and so, yeah, we're really looking forward to having it. It's going to be spectacular. Yeah, we're both in historic buildings. Yep. This is another one of Megan Speckman's favorites. This is magpie roadkill. And magpies are birds, right? Yeah. Yes. This has a card trick block in the uh, center and uh, Megan Barrett, the wall, our, our director that, that's doing our tour, or another Megan, um, on the wall, there's, we hung several together in a row that in, involved card tricks. So card trick was one of Doreen's favorite blocks. 
if you remember this Saturday Night Live uh, spoof on an infomercial, this one is called Go Fish, and it's subtitled Bassomatic. So it's got this really kind of atrocious fish fabric. It's all chopped up and put into these card trick blocks. Mm -hmm. More, more uh, during Speckman humor. When Megan Speckman was here, she and I were reminiscing about her mom and talking about all the, all the um, TV shows and movies that Doreen would have absolutely loved. <laughs> Several come to mind. <laughs> This one is titled Peaky and Spike and Friends. So it's got a high occurrence of Peaky and Spike blocks. There's Half Night and Moon blocks. There's Ice Cream Cone blocks. Just a real great representation of the blocks that she used to build her quilt designs. And this one is Fond Memories of a Grainy Square. So the card trick goes all the way around. And I think you can see what we've been talking about with Doreen's um, design work uh, about how she viewed the quilt as a whole uh, in, a, in a really neat way. Um, like I say, she's not the only one to do that, but um, she's one of the first that I remember looking at it that way. So we're entering the Alaska corner now. We have three Alaska-inspired quilts. This one is titled Denali. And so we've got trees and some um, mountainous things. It was very eloquent, wasn't it? This one is called Catch a Can. So she used her building blocks to create a whale, pieced whale along the outside. Let me get closer on a whale. I'm gonna do a phone flip real quick. And then this one, more pieced whales. This one is untitled. It's another top that would have traveled with her. She's got these great star blocks that she achieved with, um, I think, Mutt and Joe left and Mutt and Joe right. Mutt and, what's Mutt and Jeff. Mutt and Jeff, thank you. So Megan Speckman, did you go to Alaska with your mom? She's unmuted now. Sorry, I had her. Oh, here we go. She says she did at least three times. So I'd love to know, Megan, since I since you're on this, what places did you go outside? The, I know you went to a lot of places in the U.S., but I mean, did you go to New Zealand as well and to Australia? Did you make it to most of those big destinations with your mom? Um. Am I, am I on? I'm like flying, yes. flying here. Yeah. Oh, here. Oh, I am. I'm not all muted. Oh, wait. Um, yeah, I did. So we can, um, yeah, I got to go to England. I got to go to Norway a couple of times. I got to go on all the Caribbean cruises. Um, I never made it to New Zealand, but I did get to go to Australia with her. And then I went back and lived there for a year. But yeah. I got to, to go to a, a fair amount of cool places. At a very young age. Yeah, yeah. Yep. No, it was, it was, it was fun. Well, and the wonder, it's kind of sad, but it, when she died, I wrote letters to all the airlines because she had so many frequent flyer miles, which is why I was able to just, we never played, paid for a plane ticket. Um, and they actually transferred them all to me. So I like inherited over 200,000 miles th through all the different airlines, which was really, I thought was a really sweet thing that I didn't think would happen. That's great. So. 
So we're looking at the display case right now. And here are a couple more of the tops that were unfinished. This one has these darling little teacups in it and these wonderful star blocks. Here's one made from the French Provence fabric line. And then this is the quilt that started it all. I'm sorry, there's a reflection. But this is Silky. This is the quilt that Doreen made for Megan when she was not going to be a quilter, but that's what the perfect mother should do. And you can see Megan has loved it. <laughs> So I think there's just about one more section. Yeah, there is. So here's kind of a large scale shot of what our gallery looks like. We have the hardwood floors from the J.C. Penney era, and uh, we have these movable, movable walls that we rearrange for every exhibit. We have the original punch tin ceiling way up high. Um, it's just, it's a, we just have one gallery, but it's beautiful. It is beautiful. So we're in the Caribbean section now, or the Caribbean. This is Neon Lilies. Cozumel, Fish on Point. Grand Cayman, Concentric Lilies. Clyde del Carmen, All the Fish. and St. Thomas spinning fish. I like thinking about the tropics today because it's snowing in Iowa. <laughs> is it snowing in Wisconsin, Emily? Uh, it was snowing this morning, so, but it's very chilly. Yeah. And she also wrote about her, she wrote another book called Travels with Peaky and Spike, um, which I believe you guys also have available. Um, which was written a little bit later, and that really talks about her travels. Right, Peaky and Spike was actually published posthumously. Was it? And in, uh, all the quilts there, there's instructions to make a number of her quilts, and um, uh, a lot of Doreenisms in that book. She was an excellent writer, so the writing's really good, but there's a wonderful little sidebar. When Doreen started traveling, I mean, she was, she grew up in a large family in Wisconsin and, you know, traveling to distant places when you're one of, I'm going to get it wrong, I think eight kids, um, all of whose names started with D, like Doreen, uh, wasn't something that they did as a family. So when she found herself on the, on the circuit and uh, able to um, lead tours, travel everywhere to teach in the U.S. and then to take these tours, she absolutely loved it. I mean, she felt like she was the luckiest person in the world because she got paid to do it, her expenses were paid, and she got to be among quilters and go to these far off places. And uh, she loved the Caribbean, and, and Megan Speckman talked about going on these cruises. And um, there's a sidebar bar about buying a bathing suit, because Doreen was kind of heavy set. She always talked about she had these slim, slim legs and a, a, a heavier trunk. And, um, and she talked about how to buy a bathing suit uh, and uh, because she, when she went to the Caribbean, she loved to snorkel, and she, uh, hi, <laughs> and she um, needed a lot of bathing suits. So she talks about going in and, and getting, all the, or getting all the bathing suits you think might work, taking them into a dressing room, trying them on without looking in the mirror, but making sure that nothing was hanging out, and uh, when finally you got one that you felt like um, covered everything, you just took it off and went out and paid for it, and then went to the cover-up section and bought a really cute cover-up mm -hmm. to put on top of it. But um, anyway, it's so neat that her trips to the Caribbean were captured uh, in, her, in those quilts with those bright colors. So there's one more that I want you to see, and it's actually not made by Doreen. It was made for Doreen by Ruth McDowell. It was actually made in 1998, so before Doreen passed away but it's called Sliding Goddess with Heart, and it really captures Doreen's spirit and her love of moving, dancing, getting the quilters out on the dance floor with her as she traveled. Um, she's wearing her famous Birkenstocks. 
And so we're really thrilled that we were able to share this quilt as well. And Megan, why don't you uh, pan down to the picture of Doreen there? Yeah. It's shiny, so there's a little glare on it, but, but Doreen, and I'll have to, I, I'm tattling on Doreen, but she loved that picture because she didn't want her chin. And so she had this nice portrait where she has her fingers there under her chin. <laughs> Um, she had great hair, just like her uh, just this wonderful thick hair that she wore in a ponytail. Yeah, what I love about your exhibition is that you've shown um, the pictures, you also have the scrapbooks, um, and, uh, and also a memorial tribute to her um, that was signed at her, her funeral. It just, it really, really brings her to life. Um, So we're going to open it up for questions, or if anyone would like to share, there's probably quite a few of you who maybe knew Doreen. Um, you're welcome to come on. Um, I'm going to give you, you can either ask your question uh, in the chat feature, or um, you can raise your hand. There's a feature where you can just raise your hand. Um, but there's someone, Clara said, these quilts are gorgeous. The colors are breathtaking. Thank you for this. You're welcome. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Thank you for joining us. When we start to do things like this, we never know how they're going to be received. And so we're just thrilled that so many people have logged in with us twice now. Um, and I know the Wisconsin Museum is gonna continue, I think, with their Friday Lunch and Learn service or programs. Um, and we're looking at using Wednesdays to put together some virtual programming. Um, when we open our new exhibit, actually on Monday, we're gonna hang an exhibit called Man Made of quilts by men. So once we get that up, we'll be looking for some more virtual programming that we can do. Yeah, we, so we, what, uh, where is the raise your hand feature? Um, if you go, if you're in the chat, um, it's right above chat. It'll, it'll say mute me, raise hand, and yes. Is that working for people? The question is, where is the Iowa Quilt Museum located? Uh, okay, I'll answer. Uh, we're in Winterset, Iowa, and Winterset, Iowa is the county seat of Madison County, of the famous bridges of Madison County, Iowa. We are the birthplace of John Wayne, famous actor John Wayne, and, um, and the bridges of Madison County. So we're uh, southwest of Des Moines, Iowa, south central Iowa, about 35 miles from Des Moines. And uh, we're about 13 miles off either Highway 35 or Highway 80. So if you're on either one of those major interstates, uh, it's just a very quick jaunt uh, over to Winterset. And we have a town square that is a National Historic District. Uh, it's, it, we tell people sometimes we live in Mayberry um, or in the, uh, the uh, setting of Back to the Future because we have a courthouse, beautiful limestone courthouse uh, on the center. And our shops around the square are all these two-story brick, Italianate, uh, turn of the century, the other century buildings. So it's, it's a tourist community, and uh, there's lots to do and see here. So uh, come to the Iowa Quilt Museum. You can go to the John Wayne Birthplace Museum. You can visit the Iowa Theater. Uh, you can shop our cute shops. We have a wonderful quilt shop on the same side of the square as the uh, Quilt Museum. And then next door to the Quilt Museum is a Ben Franklin shop that is owned by Quilter Judy Trask. And so it's really, it, one whole end of it is fabrics. And she has a fantastic uh, selection of flannels. And, um, and we have a wonderful yarn shop as well, Heartland Fiber. So it's a go, it's a great, it's a great, it's a great community. So since I'm plugging the town, since you guys asked, Peaceworks Quilt Shop, which is in the same storefront that Fonz and Porter used to occupy, they recently uh, purchased another building just across the street as a retreat space. And it's this wonderful re retreat space. It's called More Pieces. So if you find Peaceworks Quilt Shop in Winterset, Iowa, uh, it's, a, it's got cutting tables, irons, all fitted out exactly for uh, classes. And, and when Emily and Melissa were here, we, they visited, the, there was a peak and spike class going on. So it's a great place to come visit for a weekend and you know, bring your sewing machines. It's all ground level, so you don't have to haul sewing machines up the stairs. And uh, when we can all travel again and be together again, 
uh, check that out because it'd be a great road trip. Yeah, and for those who yeah, have the Wisconsin Museum of Libraries, um, sorry, I'm getting an echo. Um, we're in um, Cedarburg, which is also a very historic, cute downtown. Um, it's got lots of Cream City brick, which is the sort of the traditional brick around here, um, and also a couple of quilt shops um, around. And we offer classes um, in our workshop space downstairs. Um, we have rotating exhibitions. Um, we rotate four, four times a year, uh, and sometimes that draws from our collection, sometimes that's with a collaboration like with Iowa, and then that's also, there are also exhibitions that we originate. Um, so we're, we've been going for 10 years. We're gonna celebrate our 10th anniversary next year um, with a big celebration uh, during the summer um, based on Stories and Stitches, which was the quilt documentation project, the Wisconsin Quilt Documentation Project. So that'll be um, a really exciting time for us. Um, Cedarburg is in Wisconsin. Sorry, I'm seeing that asking, where is Cedarburg? Cedarburg is in Wisconsin. We're about 30 minutes north of um, Milwaukee. So you, it's pretty easy to get to. There's a lot of, um, there's a great bread and breakfast and a lot of little cute shops. It's really worth it. Um, yeah, I just noticed, uh, Emily, that uh, one of our one of our viewers today, uh, Pamela Close, mentioned, and I wish I'd thought to mention this, that PeaceWorks is hosting daily quarantine videos, which are fun. And the host of those is Tony Jacobson, who is a wonderfully talented quilter. He is the uh, manager of PeaceWorks, which is owned by Joyce Franklin. And Tony serves on our board of directors of the Iowa Quilt Museum, and he is the curator for the show that we will be hanging on Monday, Man Made. And Tony is very connected with the national quilt scene, and he has borrowed quilts from uh, uh, gentlemen country, and I can't wait to see him go up. So I'm sure that we will be hosting uh, some online events and and uh, that with Tony to let you virtually see the exhibit man made. Um, and also, uh, I'm uh, Megan. Why don't you, men Megan Barrett, mention uh, Iowa Quiltscape? So in case people are wanting to sign up and know about these events and we're making sure we're not having them the same day of the week that the Wisconsin Museum is so that you Midwesterners can get your quilt fix more than one day a week. <laughs> Are you I muted? think you're muted. There we go. Um, so if you go to the Iowa Quilt Museum website, which is iowaquiltmuseum.org, and I put that in the chat, but I'll do it again. Um, the, you can join our online newsletter, uh, which is called Iowa Quiltscape. Um, and so we publish newsletter, email newsletter, no more than once a week, typically. Um, so we try not to flood your inbox, but we let you know about events that are happening here at the Iowa Quilt Museum. And then as they're submitted to us, or as we're aware of them, quilt events that are happening around the state. Um, so we're using that to serve as kind of a repository or a central locating place where people can find out about all of the quilty wonderfulness in Iowa. And we do something similar. We do a barn blast one, uh, once weekly and um, that really talks about what what's going on at the museum. Um, we're also talking, we're doing a quarantine quilt project. Um, so if you're interested in doing a 12 by 12 square um, to contribute to our quarantine quilt, or we've already gotten 130 submissions from throughout the United States. Um, so that's really exciting. And uh, we haven't even set a deadline yet because it, it'll end um, when all of this is over. So, um, so yeah. Oh, what is the current exhibit at the Wisconsin Museum? Right now we have um, Infinite Ivory and Blue, um, which is, uh, from our collection, it's all of our blue and white quilts. Um, we have an incredible collection of uh, 19th century, early 20th century blue and white quilts, and they're, it's really it's really stunning. And we're hoping, we're gonna open, hopefully, when we can reopen, that's probably what's gonna be up. And following that, we're going to have the Victoria Finley Wolf retrospective, um, and, then, and then we're gonna go into Doreen, so. Yes, our, our, my, our current exhibition has been extended till the end of July. So uh, I think it's like August 1, um, yeah. 
you know, I just saw a comment uh, in the chat from Megan Barrett, uh, and it was great. I think if not, maybe not everyone saw this, but um, there was, it's so great that we're coordinating and getting to be closer friends and more involved with the Wisconsin Quilt Museum or the Wisconsin Museum of Quilts and Fiber Arts because the Iowa Quilt Museum was actually inspired by the Wisconsin Quilt Museum. And the Iowa Quilt Museum, even though I'm this nationally known quilter, it was not my idea to, to establish the Quilt Museum in Winterset, Iowa, but a couple in our community that were very much involved in the establishment of the John Wayne Birthplace Museum visited uh, Cedarburg. And when they went to the Wisconsin Museum, they're like, well, we should have a little museum in, in Winterset. Uh, too. And so even though our museums are very different in their in their structure and, and layout, uh, and of course Wisconsin collects and we do not, but um, we are kind of like sister museums in a way because one led to another. Um, and with that, we're, you know, we, we, that we did host this as a free event, but we would love your donations. Um, all donations, as I said, are going to be split. Thank you, Marianne, for your props. Yeah, this is, here's the donation jar, and there's not much in it, but, you know, that's because nobody's coming right now. But, um, but anyway, people were very generous last week. That was great. We appreciate it. Yeah, so we're going we're gonna to share the donations um, between the two museums. So your dollars are going to go towards the funding of both, both of these wonderful institutions, and we just, we just really appreciate all your support and, um, you know, taking the time to spend your lunch hour with us. It really, it really means a lot to us to be able to share um, what we do. So we're really very appreciative. So that means you can, you can donate to either museum. Um, and then, you know, we'll add it all up and, and split it so that each gets half, which is, is great. It's a great way to do it. So, thank you all. Um, I think we're gonna end it there. If you guys and thanks everybody. Yeah, thank you all so much. And and please stay safe and healthy and well. Bye. Bye. Good to see you. Bye. Bye bye. -bye. bye, -bye. That was even more fun than last week. Was it? <laughs> it was just, it was much fun or more because we, you know, it was kind of, it's just, it's just fun. Yeah, it's, it's nice. I, I think it's, I think it's really, I'm going to pause recording.